Today I'm talking about Christians who trust in themselves. They're trusting in their own abilities, their own strength. So stay tuned. Today I'm on the subject of trusting in the self-life. Other words, this everyday life like unbelievers who just live life with a dependency on the arm of the flesh, their own ability, their own strengths, their own, had to deal with their own weaknesses, that all these areas of failure or success. But you see, as Christians, we have what the world doesn't have. We've got Jesus. We've got the life of Christ. Our bodies being the temple of the Holy Spirit. And we've got a strength from God that influence us and it can be established in such a manner in the beliefs of our heart to the point that we draw our self-worth from Jesus instead of drawing our self-worth from ourselves. I tell you, there's just too many Christians that live for God instead of letting Jesus live his life through them. This is what 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 is talking about. In this was manifested the love of God towards us and that God gave us his only begotten son that we might live through him. In other words, it's living through Jesus, not living for Jesus. Learning to let him live his life through us, living life with a dependence in the life of Christ from within. But you see, they're just Christians that in life that maybe they're saved. You know, I'm just thinking an example of a young believer that, um, that was saved and, you know, he was experiencing God in wonderful ways, going to church. But you see, he had so many years where his self-worth was established in his own strength, his own ability. In fact, he was a person that um, he had a physical problem. And because of the physical issues and the challenges he was going through and that problem, the way God worked in his life through the people he chose to work through. In fact, you know, in fact, I'm just going to share this with you in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. The scripture, verse 27, tells us that God chooses the foolish things of the world that he might put to shame them that are wise. And God chooses the weak things of the world that he might put to shame the things that are strong. You see, this person had a strength. He was very strong. And the arm of the flesh, the things he had accomplished in life physically and just the toughness and how, how strong he was. But you see, he was going through a physical problem that was that so overwhelming with seizures and the pain in his head that uh, happened later in life. And now that he was being challenged with this, he called for prayer, but the little man, and it was just a man in his 90s that prayed for him. And he knew this man, but you see, he didn't realize who it was on the phone because he was in such pain. But this little fellow that prayed for him, God worked through him powerfully in that situation. And then later, when he was still struggling and needed help in that situation because I got disconnected on the phone, my wife began to minister to him. And she told him something by the Spirit of God that only God and him knew. It opened up his heart. It was like, that's God. There's no way you could know that. And it opened up his heart to help to receive healing in the manifestation. But do you know that God worked through two people that would bring about even a greater change in his life? Because this person the next day told me this, when he realized who that little old man was, and he realized he was just old and weak and frail. And here's a man who's strong and muscular and his whole self-worth is established in being strong in life. You know, I, in fact, he had the kind of attitude that if he was ever weak and frail like this little old man in life, he'd probably want to kill himself than to be like that because it was too important for him to be strong in life. But you see, he stopped and he realized that God worked through this little old man and God worked through my wife. And he also... I came to understand this because he told me this. He said, um, that old man, he couldn't whip his way out of a wet paper bag. And then he said, your wife, he says, look, I don't want to offend you, but I don't really respect. In other words, he didn't respect women. It wasn't personal. It said he looked at women like they're weak because he's big and strong and that they're weak. But you see, God worked through two people, and then I shared these passages with him. First, in expounded, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27, but God choose the, chose the foolish things of the world that he might put to shame them that are wise. And God chose the weak things of the world that he might put to shame the things that are strong. You, when that, when I expounded and he saw this scripture and he saw the condition of his heart, he, he immediately started repenting. God, I'm so sorry. I can't believe I'm so evil. And I said, brother, I said, this is the first time you've seen these issues within your heart, isn't it? He said, yeah, he never realized it before. And it was God's word that shed light and brought a, such a godly good change that began the process of changing his life. But you see, 
I said, brother, the day before, God healed you and you knew it all along. Now that is God's grace, but God works on the inside because you see, he uses the weak things, the things that we would look at and not put the same value on, but God works through them because you see, Jesus, he gets all of the glory. 